And that's exactly what's happening in the internet world. That people are seeing ads on new sites, they're seeing, uh, they're interacting, but the thing that gets the last credit is when they've already drove up to Best Buy. They've already drove up to their search engine, surfed to their search engine and said, I'm interested in your product, let me search for it and go to your advertiser. And that's exactly what's occurring in the digital world. So we talk about what does this mean for you, think of, you know, how can I apply this? Well, at the end of the day, the majority of publishers are just not getting credit for reaching converters frequently. I, I you know, I frequently go to uh, publishers and it's also my, I was recently at ad.com, and one of the things, because every publisher has their pro pro proprietary software, and they understand that they're reaching consumers, and, you know, an ad.com will say, hey, you know, there's this advertiser that we're both working with, I'm giving them tons and tons of frequency, tons and tons of reach, and I'm getting no credit for it. And they're, to their defense, they're not seeing the other uh, campaigns or other publishers that the marketer is working with, but they know they're reaching their consumer. And so that has an effect, and a majority of these publishers have that same question. Um, they, they, they have that same question to advertisers that say, hey, I'm reaching your consumer, but why aren't I getting credit? Well, you're just not the lucky guy to be the last ad. You're not jumping out right before they're ready to purchase. Now, from an advertiser perspective, you can better leverage your buys if you understand more. I've, I've had countless conversations where uh, a, a planner has said, you know, created this great media plan, and then they pull the report, and then they cut placements from that media plan because they had a, a high CPA. And then maybe a month later, they're like, wow, you know, my total value started to fall off. Well, a lot of times, those places that you cut were upper funnel placements, were getting people interested in the brand, and there's no rhyme or reason to why my place, or why those placements that weren't performing well from a CPA perspective might have had an impact. <clears throat> so when you start to understand, the first step is there's data that we're not using, so let's collect that data and use it. Now we can understand a lot more about uh, our campaigns than we did before. And again, so buys that are intuitively low, uh, don't show an ROI, can't be defended without detailed data. And that that's exactly speaks to the Neopets example that I shared earlier, where this children movies, uh, children's movie advertiser said, you know, Neopets, lots of reach, lots of frequency, but their CPA was skyrocketed. I can't be there anymore. Well, now, when you start to include those metrics, those factors that we talked about in any type of attribution methodology, now Neopets is saved because, hey, they are reaching them. They are doing it frequently. They do have great uh, content. They are giving large ads, valuable creative types like video or expanding banners, et cetera. Those type of buys end up being saved on the campaign as opposed to being cut as they would be under the last click methodology. And then finally, search and display work together. Same for upper, uh, upper middle, and lower funnel. So, you know, one of the great things uh, about this is that we understand that all of these things work together. There's no uh, siloed, it shouldn't be a siloed approach. You know, we talked about search and uh, it losing a lot of credit, but it's still a very important part of that marketing process because we have to have, we have to build campaigns in a sense that we're reaching people at different parts, that we are reaching them to get them aware in those leisure oriented sites, that we are in that consideration phase where they're doing uh, comparison shopping, and then ultimately that we are bidding on our keywords to get that person when they're ready to, uh, they have intent to buy. And then finally, we want to encourage multi-touch attribution and longer conversion windows. So we want to subscribe to something that just goes beyond the last click. Um, we want to move to something that uses all of our data, uh, whatever your provider may be, just uses an attribution model that makes us more intelligent than simply giving the last click all of the credit. And to do that, we need to open up our conversion windows. There's been this race, as many things as we can track in the online world, there's just been this race to limit that trackability, that ability to track how much data we've raced in to shorten how much data we're able to track. So because the internet is such a trackable and measurable uh, channel, we should actually open up our windows to look at all of the data that we have there to make smarter, more intelligent decisions. And you're not in this alone, right? So, you know, we're working on this problem uh, from a publisher perspective, but also as an advertiser perspective. These are the same conversations we have uh, from a Microsoft, from a Windows 7, Office 2000 perspective. When we're pushing products out there, these are the same type of conversations we have as well. Even from an ad server uh, Atlas basis, these are conversations that we're having every day. So 
you know, I hear about the, um, the publisher calls where the publisher calls and say, why, not, why am I being cut from the campaign? And the advertiser or agency is forced to say, your CPA is too high. They're like, but I reached like a million converters, right? Why am I being cut? And there's that back and forth conversation and we're still, we're a part of it. You know, we're helping to try to give you the tools to have an apples to apples comparison so that conversation can be a much more pleasant one.